Hello everyone, Human Hard Drive here again. Uh, today, well, I guess an apology first, I lied about the last synthesizer video I was going to do. This is actually the last synthesizer video I'm going to do, well, for this synthesizer project I said I wanted to do a couple more synthesizer projects. But this is the final version of the synthesizer I started like a month ago. And this is entered on Instructables in a couple contests, but we'll get to that at the end. So here it is. I've taken that big breadboard with all those complicated wires, and I've put it into this nice box. This is actually a United States Postal Service uh, priority shipping box, which I had lying around from some old stuff. They actually make really good project boxes, and they're free, so uh, I'm not encouraging you to take something like that, but if you happen to need to ship some stuff and you had some stuff left over, some boxes left over, it's a good use. So, let's talk about what I did first before we actually get to it. Um, so, oh, stuff's falling. There we go. Let's try that again. So, here we go. Uh, LCD, uh, four pots, and with six buttons with an LED. Um, buttons were a little recessed below the, um, below the thickness of the lid, so I had to add these little plastic bits to raise them. Uh, this one broke off, don't know where it went, kind of upset about it. We move on. So it's the basic interface from last time. I added a couple knobs to the pots. Makes it feel nice and look good. It's better than having to pinch them. Uh, so on the side here we have, I've added a volume knob and a reset knob. On this side I got MIDI and on the back we've got auxiliary out uh, auxiliary speaker switch uh, it takes nine volts in, and I've got the FTDI header broken out. I probably could have figured out a better way to break that out, but we, you know, think of these things as we go. As we open this up using industrial strength Velcro. Oh, come on, there we go. All right, here we go. There we go. We see the secrets that the box hides. So over here we have the AT Mega 328P, uh, which is the controller board with uh, the crystal, a couple pull-ups, and a lot of hot glue. That's all wired together. So this is the control board. Got the audio filter here. Uh, 7805 linear voltage regulator connected to DC jack. You got the FTDI back here. Again, I probably could have done that a little better. Oh well. Uh, the audio switch. Uh, MP3 jack, 3.5 millimeter headset out, MIDI in. I added a speaker, which is what this puppy here is for. This is a, um, see if I can zoom in on this a bit. There we go. Uh, there we go, let it get in focus. Uh, this is a amplifier breakout I got from SparkFun because I don't feel comfortable enough wiring an op amp on my own without frying something. So I just purchased one nice and easy. I guess we can see a little better what I've got. Is the audio section, the filter, and then the control board. Uh, I got the audio knob and reset switch here, and then at the top, I guess I'll just flip this around, zoom out again. There you uh, got the LCD, serial LCD, again from SparkFun. Um, button array, which I was very lucky to have lying around. This is from an old LCD monitor. So it actually had exactly six switches, so very happy about that. And the four potentiometers, I misplaced the screws and washers, so these are hot glued in, so they're pretty much stuck. But, yep, yeah. so that's it. Uh, so what's changed hardware-wise? Uh, the amp and speaker. I really wanted an onboard speaker as opposed to just having a audio out. It's much nicer. Um, MIDI in. Still don't have a MIDI keyboard, kind of upset about it, but I know this works. I've got this circuit wired up. This is an opto, and yep, so that all works. So that's the hardware changes I've made. Everything is exactly the same. Just put on nice bits of PC board so it looks nice. So if I close this back up, we can talk about what I changed. Let's see if I can close this. Velcro. We can talk about what I changed software-wise. Um, I didn't think too hard about this when I did this. I should have realized that I should have offset this so that the speaker doesn't go directly into the ground. 
but it still sounds good, but for this video I'm going to be putting it on a box so that it sounds a little cleaner. Now I found that the amp, the reason I added that DC in was because the amp draws more power than a USB can actually supply, and I also have to power the LCD, sucks a bit of power, but so that's the point of the DC. It should also be able to run solely on DC power without USB so that you can have MIDI in. So I'm going to hook this up because again I don't have a MIDI keyboard. So there we go. Okay. So there's the LCD. Same thing, um, but I've added a couple different things. So I'm going to run the software. Okay. So uh, I still have the sense knob. Which I've managed to get better centered at a zero value. So I have exactly zero sense. Um, still got the octave knob and the balance knob. That's all good. Now, this used to be what controls the arpeggiator. It doesn't anymore. This now controls the semitune of the oscillate of the second oscillator. So this actually shifts it entire notes uh, in a chromatic scale. So it goes negative one octave to positive one octave. That crackling you hear is because the in-between values where it changes from note to note aren't steady, so they flicker back and forth. But you can get it centered. Okay, so that's that. Uh, so I've also added extra settings. So if I hit that, you can see up here, I finally figured out a way to get this to be implemented. I added an LFO. So uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. I still have the arpeggiator and the lock. I also have banks still in here. Um, everything is now saved into a bank, including the LFO settings. So really glad. Um, in order to get the LFO to work, I had to rewrite the entire interrupt sequence that generates the waveform. So it all had to be completely re-optimized, but it works now, and it's much more stable. So the LFO can generate the same waveforms as the normal oscillators, and you can route it to uh, unlock it. There's independent locking now. You can lock the extra settings, and you can lock the normal settings independent of one another, so that you can move from setting to setting without losing anything. Okay, so I can route the LFO to the semi-control, the sense control, and the octave control. Uh, I wasn't able to get the amplitude control working sanely. It would work, but it would sound absolutely terrible, so I've left it out. There, the really only good way I can think to do it is with hardware, but, you know, I still got have these. And, again, I can control it through sine, triangle, L-saw, R-saw, square wave. Okay, so this controls the frequency of the LFO, and this controls the amount the LFO sweeps. So, oh, I actually set it to something there. Really. So that's the semi, the sense, and finally the octave. So I'll just 
at this point I'll just step through everything I can think of, um, just sit back and enjoy the noise. Uh, before I get too involved in this, I mentioned at the beginning that this is entered in an Instructables Musical Instruments competition. You can find the link to it in the description uh, where I talk about all of it, give you the code and the schematics to get this all working yourself. You can also find all that stuff in the GitHub repository I've got set up now. Um, so if you like this and you want to build one or you like this and you're a fan, uh, vote for me to win that contest. This is also entered in an Arduino competition. And uh, if I win, I'd like to you know, give back to you guys and do a little giveaway of some of the stuff I win. Well, well, it won't be me winning, it'll be you winning. If, well, if I win and you also win the competition and you win the giveaway, but I want to give back. So, you guys vote for me and I win, I give back. So, now that, that said, I guess I'll just go into a little demo of all the features I can squeeze out of this. So, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.